My name is David M and I work with the company Kaspersky Lab. We're internet security software specialists. Today is Safer Internet Day. This gives us all a chance to focus on the potential dangers we encounter when we go online, but also to look at some simple steps that we can take to stay safe when we're online. Well, what are the threats? Well, until a few years ago, the threat landscape was dominated by what we call cyber vandals. People who wrote viruses for kicks. All they were interested in was disrupting our activity. They weren't interested in anything beyond that. Unlike today's cyber criminals, who are very focused on making profits illegally from our online activity. How do they do that? Well, think about it. Every time we go online, every time we go to the bank, for example, every time we use a social networking site, every time we go to an auction site, every time we engage in any kind of online commerce, this means typing in some confidential information, a password, for example. Now, cyber criminals write malware. Malware just means malicious software, and it includes viruses, worms, trojans, rootkits, phishing scams, spyware, any kind of malicious program that they can use to capture information. And that's what they're focused on, capturing your personal information and my personal information. Every time we type a password in, their program will capture that information and send it off to the hacker. And the hacker then can pretend to be us online. They can access our bank account. They can access our LinkedIn account. They can access our Facebook account. Any of our online activity can be captured by them and abused for their purposes. So they can steal our money, for example. Or they can misuse our computer and use it to attack other people on the web. Or they can use it to, uh, to launch spam on other people on the internet without our knowing. It's a silent threat. We don't see what's installed. So, if that's the nature of the threat, how do we get infected? How are we exposed? Well, you could be exposed in any number of ways. It could be that you do email, for example, like most of us do these days. Emails quite often come with attachments, and the attachment could be a malicious program. So if it's come from somebody you don't know, be very suspicious about that. But these days, it's much more likely to be a link. And the link, if you click on it, could take you to a fake website. It looks like the bank site, but it isn't the bank site, it's run by a cyber criminal and the cyber criminal's program gets installed and from then on you're owned by the cyber criminal. Anything you do can be captured and sent off to the hacker and they control your information, control your bank account, control anything that you access online. It could be an instant message that you receive. It could be, for example, that you use Twitter and you click on a link in Twitter and that takes you to a fake website or takes you to some site where a program installs silently. It could be that you go onto Facebook or MySpace or LinkedIn or any of the social networking sites. Now remember, we all want to go to those sites to share information, to meet people, to keep in touch with people we already know. And the danger is that you share too much information. And the more information you share, Potentially, the more cyber criminals can find out about you and gather personal information, who you're married to, what your pet's name is, any of your interests and activities online. And it's possible that as they build up more and more of a profile on you, they can use that information to access your accounts. It doesn't just have to be email, instant messaging, social networking, of course. It could be anything you do online. It could be just visiting a web page. That sounds very risky and you might be wondering how they do this. Well, cyber criminals scour the internet looking for websites that may have security loopholes in them. And they use those loopholes to bury their code on the website. They hide it secretly so you can't see it. But it's set to automatically execute when you just read the web page. So when you go as an innocent viewer of that web page, just an innocent visitor, that code automatically executes and if your system is not patched, potentially, it can then execute, install itself on your computer, and they control your computer from that point on. So, if that's the nature of the threat, what can you do about it? Because it's not all doom and gloom. You can follow some simple steps, and you can stay safe online. First of all, make sure that you install internet security software on your system. Make sure that you keep it up to date as well. In addition to that, make sure you set Windows to automatically update itself so those security patches 
you don't have to worry about them, they get installed automatically. In addition to that, make sure you don't forget the other applications that you use. Although Windows installs updates automatically, other applications that you use may not. So make sure that if you're using Adobe Reader, for example, or make sure any other application you're using, you, you update it. You have the latest version and it's secure. In addition to that, remember that your data may be exposed. You may have important files on your system, documents, photographs, and so on. Um, if you lose any of those, where would you be without them? So back up that data regularly. Make sure it's backed up to USB. Make sure it's backed up to CD or DVD. Now, in addition to that, just be very careful about sharing information online. It's not just clicking on email attachments or following links. It's also the information you share with people on social networking sites. Don't just assume that somebody is who they say they are. And if you're on an untrusted site or if you receive an email or an instant message from somebody and you don't know them, just be very, very careful. In fact, it pays to be very careful whoever you're dealing with online. In addition to that, it's not just you you need to keep safe, it's also your children. You've got to keep them safe. That means installing parental control software on the system, not so you can spy on your children, just so that you can keep them safe. Parental control software will make sure that you can limit their exposure to people, let's say, in chat rooms who may decide that they want to prey on your children. Or you can limit their exposure to unwanted content, sexual, racist content, anything that you, know, you would be uncomfortable your children accessing. So install parental control software and help to keep them safe that way. In addition to that, try to share your children's online experience. All too often there's a temptation today to give children a computer and let them keep it in their bedroom. But there's a potential risk involved with that because what they do online doesn't happen under your watchful care. So keep the computer in the family room. You use it, they can use it, and share what you do as a family. And very important this, encourage your children to talk to you so that if they encounter anything online that makes them uncomfortable, they share that with you and you can take further action by talking to the police if need be. So today is Safe for Internet Day, but it's important that you follow these guidelines to stay safe whenever you're online. So my name again is David M. I'm from Kaspersky Lab. Stay safe online.